Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Permaculture Perspectives. Now it's been a pretty long little while since I've done one of these videos, but 2020 was a tough year and lots of stuff was happening. So uh, now that I have some time, I wanted to come back and do a video that I've been thinking of doing for a really long time. And that is that I wanted to share some of my permaculture, my favorite permaculture books with you. Now I have six books to share with you today and some of them deal specifically with the topic of permaculture, but a few of them are not specifically about permaculture, but I still think are really relevant and are still really good for kind of broadening your horizons and deepening your ability to think like a designer and create a connection to the landscapes around you. So I'm going to start with the strictly permaculture books and then towards the end of the video we'll talk about the not specifically permaculture books. Okay, let's get started. I think a lot of people who practice permaculture probably have like their kind of go-to book and for me it's always been Gaia's Garden by Toby Hemingway. Now I think you can tell by the state of this book that it is well loved and has been very much used throughout the years. Um, so Toby Hemingway has sadly passed away a few years ago, but actually I was able to attend a urban permaculture workshop with him in Vancouver, BC. I think it was back in 2013 or 2012 and was actually able to get a signed copy of the book. So I just feel super honored to have this book and this is just like the go-to. It's great because it has a lot of illustrations, um, but it also has a lot of text. Like it's not, it's a really good balance between text and illustrations and photographs. So like here, they show you a rainwater harvesting system that you can do. And just the way that Toby explains permaculture is really easy to understand, but he goes into enough depth that you really get a sense of it. And I'm not going to lie, I actually have a hard time reading non-fiction books, like how-to books, just books that deal with the real world. I much prefer, for reading purposes, I prefer fantasy or novels. Um, but I have read this book cover to cover like several times, and I find it really easy to read. It's really interesting, and it's really kind of intuitive and has like the amazing you know before and after pictures that you always want in a good permaculture design book there's a really good section in there on composting and uh, some really good case studies and then at the end there's like charts really useful charts for different kinds of shrubs and trees and plants so i'll just give you a quick overview on some of the chapters in gaia's garden just so you can kind of get an idea of what's to be found in here so part one is called the garden as an ecosystem where it's a kind of an introduction to understanding ecosystems and thinking of gardens as that. Uh, pieces of the ecological garden, assembling the ecological garden. And then there's a whole different list of tables in this book which include things like carbon to nitrogen, nitrogen ratios, mulch and compost materials, cover crops, nitrogen fixers, nurse plants, plants that provide poultry forage, useful plants for birds, etc., etc. Tons of great information. Now I will say the caveat with this book is that it deals with kind of the suburban scale of permaculture. So it doesn't really talk too much about like the big farm acreage type of permaculture design. It more so focuses on the urban, suburban, that kind of um, scale and also uh, Toby lived in Oregon, so that's kind of his reference point for different plants and for, you know, his familiarity with plants is that kind of West Coast um, ecosystem. So uh, if you live in that area, this, would, this book would be especially useful for you. So there aren't too many tips uh, on like very arid climates or tropical climates. So that's just something to keep in mind. But Oh my god, love this book. It's definitely my number one permaculture book. Thank you, Toby. So my second book that I'm going to show you guys is actually 
uh, has to do with a specific realm within permaculture, which is the built environment. And uh, that is because I am very interested in natural building and specifically cob building. I've actually done a three month long uh, course where I learned to build a house out of cob and it was one of the most amazing experiences of my life. It is my dream to build my own cob house. And so that is why the hand sculpted house is my second favorite permaculture book. And of course, it deals with the built environment. It deals with building your own home using natural building methods, specifically cob. So if you're not interested in that, then it wouldn't really be too relevant for you. But even still, I think this book is super empowering because it literally goes step by step from bare land, planning your goals, planning your vision, doing a mock-up of your home, like your future home using sticks and curtains just so you can get a feel of the space, um, all the way to building different cob mixes, different plaster mixes, different frameworks, different roof styles. It's just really good. So if you are like, you can find a lot of this stuff obviously nowadays on YouTube, but this I find to be a really comprehensive book about cob design and cob building. And again, really nice balance between photographs and kind of images and I mean, it's great. Yeah, I, I really like for me, what I really look for in a book is the balance of like easy to read, lots of visual things to look at, but then it gives you the details that you need to actually go out and do the things, which I sometimes find like books either go too far in the like textbook, uh, too detailed direction, or they're too far in that uh, very high level basic um, level where you don't really get in depth. And so this again is another one of those books that I think has a really good balance. So this book is written by Yonto Evans, Michael J. Smith and Linda Smiley and it's called The Hand Sculpted House, A Philosophical and Practical Guide to Building a Cob Cottage. So I'm just going to read a few of the chapters to you so you can kind of get an idea. Um, so it talks about natural building, Oregon cob, creative economics, very important when you're planning a house, um, <clears throat> tilt and spin, so talking about orienting your house properly according to the cardinal directions and the sun stuff like that, um, your building site, designing with cob, redefining the word house, what does that actually mean, materials and tools, drainage and foundations, making the best cob, site respect and preparation, very important, cob walls, windows, doors, as you can see it really gets down into all of the details that you need. And then there's a part that's called onward, bridging the inner and outer worlds, I love that. I love how permaculture really blends that practical skill building element with kind of philosophical and like a broader thoughtful approach to design and our place in the world. That's really cool. So the next two books that I'm going to share with you have to do with my particular area of interest in permaculture, which is actually social permaculture. I'm really interested in this lesser known, but I think broader reaching dimension and conversation within permaculture. So I'm going to share my two favorite books with you within that realm. And before I do that, I just want to say that I think it's really useful to familiarize ourselves with the social dimensions of permaculture, even though we really want to do all of that cool hands-on DIY land-based design stuff. Land-based designs and DIYs live in social environments and are built in social environments. So it only makes sense to have that social context for what we make before we go ahead and do it because uh, in the 10 plus years that I've kind of been in the permaculture world I had all of the projects that I've seen go sideways or kind of get left behind and not used or unfinished are because the people didn't think of the social context like who's going to benefit from this who is going to use this how does this fit into the community how will people feel comfortable or uncomfortable with this how practical is it for my family? They kind of get swept up by the coolness of it and then, you know, those other pieces get left behind. So I think the social part is really, really important. <clears throat> and with that said, my first book that I'm gonna recommend is People and Permaculture by Luby McNamara. 
Now, Luby is amazing, <clears throat> and uh, I also had the pleasure of meeting Luby. I was lucky enough to attend the EUPC 2016, which is the European Permaculture Convergence in Bolsena, Italy. It was amazing. <clears throat> I was actually volunteering there. And so, uh, yeah, also got a signed copy from Luby at a workshop uh, for women in permaculture, which is awesome because later on I went to join, I went on to join the Permaculture Women's Guild, and now both Luby and I teach uh, aspects of the Permaculture Women's Guild online PDC, which is so amazing. Like, I cannot believe that I'm teaching in the same course as Luby. So this book, People in Permaculture, is a really awesome book to introduce social concepts within permaculture. Um, it's, it's really easy to read and get through and has a lot of just really good information. So it talks about how you can think like an ecosystem, uh, really dives into the ethics of permaculture, um, abundance thinking, and then applying patterns and principles and systems thinking to social uh, social environments. It talks about the power of observation, zones, inputs. Luby has a really cool design system called the Design Web, which I really like. It's a bit more of an intuitive design system. It's not so linear like some of the other ones. He talks about health and healing, emotional health, healthy mind, boundaries, uh, reaching our potential, being creative, designing our livelihoods. So within permaculture, the permaculture flower, there's this whole section on kind of livelihoods and um, building a life for ourselves where what we do in exchange for uh, money or financial resources aligns with our ethics and values, which is a really hard thing to do and is definitely it's just there it's a whole big conversation so i'm going to make a video about that one day soon hopefully um, but she talks about that communication observation the edge between ourselves and other people so all of these really cool ways of just applying permaculture thinking to our relationships and our communities and all of the ways that we fit into this world socially governments governance governance and governments um, learning from others, connecting with nature, future, thinking about the future. This is just a picture of Luby's design web model, which I really love. I love like hand drawn things being an official diagram in a book. I just, that's something I find really appealing. And I think Luby has just come out with a brand new book actually. I can't remember the title of it, uh, but definitely go and check that out. She's an amazing lady. Okay, so that is it for that book, People in Permaculture, very recommended. Now we're actually going to move into the second half, which is the books that are not specifically or not only about permaculture, but also about other things um, that I think are still really important and for me were really meaningful. So the first of those books is Food Not Lawns by Heather Jo Flores. And I'm definitely biased because Heather is the administrator of the Permaculture Women's Guild and the Permaculture Women's Guild online permaculture course that I'm a part of. But I ordered this book as soon as I joined the guild and it is so good. I'm really interested in community building. I'm a community project consultant by profession. So this is a, just an amazing book. It's just all about kind of becoming empowered by making change in the spaces around you and it like for me i really advocate for permaculture and any kind of community building to be accessible to people uh, regardless of how much money they have or what they can afford i really hate the idea that permaculture is only for landowners only for people who have big acreages so that's why a lot of these books have to do with things other than that so um, I know that Heather was a renter for a really long time and I rented for most of my life so this book is written from the perspective of someone who's like living in a community and wants to make change and maybe they have limited resources but there's so many cool ways that you can draw on those resources to still make positive change so in her book her chapters are free your lawn obviously it's called food not lawns so it talks about how you can transform lawn uh, monocultures into bountiful gardens the water cycle the living soil plants and polycultures seed stewardship 
ecological design, which is the part specifically on permaculture, beyond the garden, into the community, reaching out, working together, and the next generation. So do you see how it starts kind of super local, like your own little garden space, your own area, and then like slowly kind of goes out broader and broader into the community? I really think that what builds resilience in community projects or even in DIY projects is them being connected to the broader community and having that support from beyond your own, the, the reach of your own hand, so to speak. And so this book deals with that topic uh, in a lot of different ways. Uh, it has a really awesome section on urban ecology. So this is a really good book for people who live in cities. What if I don't have a lawn? Making the most of a space, growing in the shade. That has been a big, for some reason, every place I've ever lived, I've never had the perfect orientation for a garden. It's always north facing like this place is or you know east facing with tons of shade or between two tall buildings and you know what you can still make it work so please do not let anyone tell you that unless you have a south facing garden you cannot grow a garden it is not true this book highly highly recommend it thank you heather okay my fifth book is called change here now and it is by adam brock and it also specifically deals with the topic of social permaculture and it kind of is a really good book, I think, to read right after you read People in Permaculture. So this one kind of like introduces the concepts of social permaculture. And then this book is like almost an encyclopedia of different ways that you can put those concepts into practice at different scales. So it's not really a book that you need to read like cover to cover. It has a lot of very short chapters. Almost all of them are case studies on different ways of applying permaculture concepts. So just to give you an example, <clears throat> it talks about um, commoning, for example, the use of common spaces. It talks about uh, creative process, sector and zone analysis, network analysis, decolonization, uh, slow cities, or like the, the Chita slow movement, which is the idea of focusing more on local produce, uh, living our lives with intention, building community on the local level, nonviolent struggle, solidarity, art of resistance, truth and reconciliation, practicing grief. And then there's a whole section on economy. I'm really interested in alternative economics. I actually, my section in the Permaculture Women's Guild course is about rethinking economic systems and I talk about community currencies and the degrowth movement. So the fact that he has like a whole section of chapters on alternative economics is so cool. Talks about small businesses, regenerative enterprise, and then there's different uh, sections also about activism and becoming active uh, in the causes and in the movements that we feel aligned with. So there's knowing your community, actions, not intentions, it's like, this book is a really, um, it's a, also a really good mix of practical things, but then also philosophical kind of food for thought sections. And um, I got the chance to have a video chat with Adam Brock. Uh, I think it was like two years ago when I was thinking of publishing a book. I just wanted to know a bit more about the process. And so I haven't met him in person, but I can tell you he is an awesome guy. He started this project called uh, Grow House, I think in Boulder, Colorado, which is like an amazing uh, ecosystemic social enterprise that supports different folks in the community in really cool ways. I very much urge you to check it out. Um, yeah, just highly recommend. I haven't seen too many people wielding this book uh, that I know, so this is definitely like really cool for that social community level um, even if that's not something you've been interested in before, this is like super easy to read and just like gives you so much stuff to ruminate about, which I love. So yes, change here now. Very relevant, especially for today's global environment. And finally, last but not least, this book is amazing. It is also not strictly a permaculture book, but it is called Landmarks and it's by an author called Robert McFarlane or McFarlane. I'm just gonna say McFarlane. And this book was given to me as a gift by my husband several years ago. 
And actually, I heard about this author, Robert McFarlane, through, I think it was an article in The Guardian, where he talked about how through language we know the earth. So he was specifically referring to small communities in the UK that used to have specific words for very specific phenomena in the natural world. So like they would have a specific word for the way that an icicle, a hanging icicle looks in the morning light. So he was advocating for collecting those words and caring for them because if we don't have words for things, we don't think about those things. So I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. Like, yeah, if you don't have a word for something that specific, you might not even notice it. And he was talking in the, in the article, it was talking about how uh, language and relationship to our environment are so intimately linked. And so this book is just a kind of meditation on that. And he talks about himself and his own experiences, but he also talks about other uh, authors and people who have done these incredible journeys where they've gotten to know their ecosystems better through their own physical journeys. So specifically, he talks about um, one lady whose name I can't remember now, but she was a writer and she lived in the Cairngorms mountains of Scotland and all of her writing centered around her own personal experiences of going on mountain walks literally every single day and just getting this like very intimate personal relationship with a specific mountain range and that inspiring an entire body of work. And the language used in these descriptions is like right 50% between poetry and prose for me, like it's just so beautifully written. And then he also talks about another person who um, wanted to swim in every major body of water in the UK and just get to know his country through immersing himself in all the different water bodies and how that felt and, and what that journey was like for him. And um, it's just really cool because like I grew up with my dad who goes cold water swimming all the time and I know personally like when I'm out in nature I definitely feel a, a really spiritual connection and I always feel like I learn something every time I go for like a meditative walk or a hike and, or anything like that and um, the fact that there's a book that talks specifically about how we know the world through our senses and through our bodies and how that can inspire creativity and respect and you know change our lives in very profound ways I think that's amazing and there's really cool glossaries in here of old words um, like in Welsh and different languages in the UK that are um, those kinds of specific words so let me see if I can find any for you. So this is a whole uh, glossary just on lights, hazes, mists and fogs. I used to be obsessed with mist and like misty environments when I was a teenager and I actually went and lived in Ireland for half a year and so this is like very close to my heart. He doesn't say which language this is. I'm sure if I read, uh, reread the section before it would tell me. So I just think that's so beautiful and amazing and really recommend this book. Again, this is not specifically about permaculture, but permaculture is about building a relationship with the land. Like, you cannot do a proper permaculture design without having a relationship with the land. I think especially those of us who are settlers in the Americas, we sometimes feel disconnected from the landscapes around us because we don't have like that thousands years of history um, to really draw on. So. For me, this book is really useful in that regard. It kind of gives you some tips and tools of how to come back into, uh, into a meaningful relationship with the land and do it in a really respectful way. And for me, all of these books, all of these books give me the tools to really do that um, on different levels. Guys, my legs are falling asleep, so I'm gonna end this video. It was actually a lot longer than I was anticipating. So I just wanted to say thank you so much if you 
came back to my channel and watched this video, um, please uh, give it a like if you liked it and feel free to subscribe. I'm really hoping to be making more regular content and videos. Uh, before this, I was not living in a situation where I had the privacy to do that. So there was like a almost a year long period where I just didn't make anything, but that has changed. So please do stick around and I will see you in the next video. Bye.